Today at CES 2017, we are talking about AMD's Vega architecture. I have some information for you. It's not as much as I want. We'll get there eventually, but they've given us some cursory stuff. This is going to be a more casual format because it's an architecture discussion shot at a trade show. Uh, so it's we don't have the time to look into the real depth. And fortunately, AMD has not provided much more depth than what we have here anyway. So before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by CyberPower and their Cyber XL gaming system, which has support for inverted motherboard tray layout and has an acrylic window on one side, which you can choose which side, I guess, if you want. Link in the description below for more information on that. So AMD's Vega, speaking of links in the description below, we'll have an article linked below if you want a recap of all this stuff in a more concrete form. The basics, the Vega architecture, the cursory overview we have, it's not guaranteed to be HBM for every Vega enabled video card, but HBM2 is on Vega, of course, as we've known for quite some time. HB cached is something we'll be talking about here, as is what AMD's calling rapid packed math, uh, basically precision switching based on context between FP16 and FP32. It has FP64 capabilities, integers in there as well. It can switch 16 and 32. And uh, that's the most of it. I don't have product details at this time, so AMD has not made available to the press or anyone else the shader count, the memory capacity, the price, uh, the specific SKUs, anything like that. We just have top-level architecture for the time being. So starting off, uh, one key thing to note right out of the gate is that the traditional CUs more or less still exist. So the compute unit, if you look at a block diagram for a compute unit, it from what I've been told, looks pretty much the same with today's NCUs. So that's what Vega uses. It runs on NCUs. I think from what it sounds like, that's not a fully defined publicly anyway acronym yet, but it's something like new compute unit or next gen compute unit. So NCUs are what we'll be talking about uh, when referencing the traditional CUs. And then uh, the rest of it, we go into things kind of speaking about high bandwidth cache as the immediate obvious topic since that's what AMD is going to be talking about in all of their slideshows and presentations. High bandwidth cache is a new phrase that is more or less replacing the phrase VRAM as it pertains to Vega architecture. Uh, and this doesn't necessitate that the GPU or the video card run HBM in order to be uh, to fall under the high bandwidth cache phrasing, it could run GDDR5 or 5X or whatever, some other memory, as long as it is, quote, sufficiently fast, uh, then it will be considered high bandwidth cache just based on the rest of the architecture. Now, what sufficiently fast is, I don't know. I don't know what the cutoff is there to be considered high bandwidth cache, but what is it? Well, we have one slide that's sort of useful for this explanation. You can see it's uh, basically just a block diagram layout of the traditional caches, your L1, your L2, and then HBM, which is acting as somewhat of a cache. It's a bit of a tertiary cache. And that's because HBM, as with Fiji and the Fury X, is located on the substrate. It's adjacent to the GPU die, more or less. I don't know if they have the same interposer architecture as previously, but previously it was sort of a substrate, GPU and an interposer, all that stuff. Uh, and then the memory can be stacked, and that's continuing with Vega. You can stack the memory so that reduces the physical space requirement and reduces a few other things like power consumption. This is not news with Vega. It's just kind of how HBM works in any of its implementations that we've seen so far. Using AMD's words here to describe things a bit more, uh, other than breaking the things into smaller data into smaller pages with the HP cache controller, it's also more intelligent, which, uh, you know, who knows what that really means exactly, but uh, the prefetching routine is supposed to be a bit more advanced. I don't have details on that, uh, but it should be better at prefetching. It should be better at man managing the incoming and outgoing memory of the data streams. So if you're streaming a large texture, in theory, HB cache will know better uh, how it should break up that texture. Memory bandwidths are upwards of a terabyte per second. This has been known for a little while now. Uh, Vega, in theory, this, this part's kind of interesting. In theory, Vega, from what we're told, can support up to about a 512 terabyte virtual address space. That doesn't mean, of course, that you'll get that. Uh, but if you have the rest of the system configured, uh, 512 terabyte virtual address space is going to be uh, your combination of things like system memory and HBC on Vega. And uh, that would, it's sort of a unified memory. AMD wants to avoid 
the phrase unified memory because they've used it in the past for their APUs and that could cause some confusion. But it can be thought of in some ways as a unified memory. I'll have more information on that eventually. Again, that's what a lot of this is, is going to be. The We'll have more information later, unfortunately. Uh, as for other things, I'm curious to see how that integrates, if at all, with Intel CPUs. I don't know if Vega will have access to the Intel memory bus in a way that would enable it fully. There might be an abstraction layer in there. Uh, the AMD CPUs or APUs might perform a bit differently in that regard, but we'll have to talk to AMD about that and maybe get an engineer uh, who can explain it a bit better than the press deck and the, the slideshow. Uh, applications. So here's the, the main part that they'll be talking about, this idea of rapid packed math. With Vega, Vega is taking the fact that for every single application or every uh, data set in computing, you don't need just single precision. Some of them, of course, might want double precision if, you're, if you need more accuracy. Or if you're working with something like deep learning where there is just a huge amount of data and missing on one or two pieces of information is largely irrelevant, then half precision is just fine and it speeds up the operations and is generally going to be more favorable than crunching on, uh, on numbers with two times the amount of precision that you need. So rapid packed math allows switching between FP16 and 32 and I believe integer uh, as well. And that means that if there's a specific piece of data or a task that you're completing that doesn't need the precision, it's faster. For gaming, this doesn't really have a whole lot of immediate implications. It might not have any implications for any amount of time that's relevant to Vega's existence as a product. But uh, basically, I suppose AMD was telling us that there's some evidence of a development house working on the PS4 Pro looking into the idea of precision switching. That's all I have right now for gaming. So uh, this is more of an application for deep learning environments. Vega strikes uh, somewhat of a, a it, it lands right in between trying to be a gaming targeted architecture and trying to fill a space in deep learning where AMD is definitely behind right now. They haven't made any major plays there, so this will be part of a, an attempt to gain some ground in deep learning, deep neural nets, things like that. So that is not a gaming application necessarily. I would not get too sucked into the rapid packed math notes uh, slides that are going around. It's it just, we, there's no development support for it right now for gaming. And that would probably have to be explicitly supported by the application, at least at some level. And game developers traditionally are not very good about doing that sort of thing. Look at DirectX 12 and Vulkan, where either there's very little support or the support that exists is not fully executed in a way that uh, is what you would expect based on the marketing materials with Maybe one exception being Doom with Vulkan. That one was done pretty well. Same idea there, though. Wouldn't get too sucked into that marketing hype. Uh, the rest of it, I, that's that's really most of it. I suppose reading off the notes here from our conversation with AMD, some other key, key items they sped out were uh, more than doubled the geometry engine peak throughput per clock. That's certainly important. Uh, effectively higher IPC, higher instructions per clock with the Vega NCU, also important. Higher frequencies are capable with Vega NCU. I don't know what that's compared against. I would, I would assume Polaris, uh, as that was the previous architecture. But higher frequencies on the clock. Uh, traditional NCU is built around 32-bit operations, and this can handle more diverse workloads. And the ALUs can process two 16-bit operations in parallel, which is also relevant to what we were talking about. Uh, there's a next-generation pixel engine, handles rasterization, which is, if you don't know, polygon to pixel conversion. Uh, and handles post-processing of pixels, decides what's visible, like anti-aliasing, theoretically does better culling of uh, things that would produce overdraw. So that's all the, the highlights. Hopefully have more information at some point in the near future. Otherwise, link in the description below for more information. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.